Rina. I'm Dylan. And we're Ocean Fever Mentors. Um, so Ocean Fever is basically a nonprofit organization that focuses on getting people comfortable in the ocean and just kind of swimming. We have a summer camp. We work with kids, people of all ages, and we just kind of try to integrate our community to, uh, you know, go out during these rough times. Hey everyone, this is Bill Brand, Mayor of Redondo Beach. I'm here to talk about how I've been working over 20 years to keep Redondo Redondo. And what's great about Redondo is the ocean, is our community, is our youth, our schools, and just keeping Redondo Redondo and enjoying join our, our outdoors and, and everything that makes Redondo great. So um, thanks for tuning in and uh, see you out on the ocean. Hi, I'm Dylan. And I'm Ina. And we're Ocean Fever Mentors, uh, and today we're going to be interviewing the mayor. Um, Can you give a little background on uh, like how you got to where you are today, and kind of like how you connect with the ocean? Uh -huh. Sure. Hi everybody, I'm Bill Brand, Mayor of Redondo Beach, and I've been an ocean person I think since I was five, and I actually first started having a relationship with the ocean in Galveston Bay, Texas. I was wow. a little boy, and I was all by myself, and and uh, these big ships were coming by and they were leaving these big wakes and you know i was just a kid but i found this styrofoam board and yeah. i thought well maybe i can ride those because i saw some other guys riding the waves and so i would stand there when i'd see a ship coming and i'd wait for the waves and then i would ride the waves this little five-year-old kid by myself it was, it was uh it was uh, uh enlightening even back then as a boy to you know start a relationship with, with nature yeah. And how has that transferred over to Redondo? How have you able to connect that with Redondo Beach? Well, you know, I was actually living in Dallas, Texas at the time. So in the summer, we would go to Galveston Bay and that was my first exposure to the ocean. But when I was eight years old, we moved to the South Bay. And I'll never forget, as long as I live as an eight-year-old boy, we were driving down Harbor Drive, 1966. I was hanging out of our family station wagon with my three brothers and sisters and my parents. and then sticking my head out the window going, oh my God, are we gonna live here? And, uh, you know, it just, just my whole relationship with the ocean and Redondo Beach and the South Bay just blossomed from that point forward. And it continues. And when you moved here, did you like take any kind of surf lessons or like do junior guards or any local? No, I was actually very self-motivated. You can ask my parents. I was a kid and if I get up at 4.30 in the morning because I figured out that it would get light by about 5.30 and I would have to get my stuff and walk down to the beach with my friends and, and just every day we were going to the beach and swimming in the ocean and we were just all very drawn to it. So I saw the junior lifeguards and I saw everything they were doing about that looks like fun but I was just self-motivated. I didn't really need a structure or anything and, and we just what we did and we were so drawn to it it, it, it wasn't hard <laughs> actually it's funny you say that because our uh slogan this year for ocean fever is going to be self motivate hashtag self motivation oh, so it's okay. perfect um so i go. mean how do you feel about that like because we had previous years of empowering youth and mm -hmm. kind of it's more of a recent thing we've been starting so it's, it, we've actually decided to like name it self motivation because huh of everything going on it's like hard to a lot of people can't get out of the house and right. maybe it's right. like i don't know a lot of people are going through mental health issues yep. too so it's stressful we, time how do you think me. ocean fever can help get people out of the house and well i think kind of what you described uh, nothing against junior lifeguards it's a great program and frankly if my parents had enrolled me in it i would have joined it but um i was kind of hard to control yes. <laughs> and i was just doing it on my own anyway but you know, organizations like Ocean Fever and in combination with, with structure like that really just goes a long way in exposing youth to the ocean, to not just the ocean, but more of an outdoor relationship with nature. And it's just so critical. As I looked back through my life, how important that, that relationship of being outdoors and the ocean and the trees and the birds and the animals, it's, 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 it, it just seems like a critical component of having a well-rounded life. I think humans are drawn innately to a relationship with nature and you have to either be self-motivated 
or be structured and be forced to get out there, but you've got to get out there and develop a relationship either with the ocean or, or nature in some form or another. And so, you know, ocean fever, junior lifeguards, it all, it all makes a difference. Um, so like a lot of our themes last year were like empowering the youth and uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. So how do you think those are going to like help people during these times as well? Mm -hmm. How do you think ocean fever? You know, um, as physical as ocean sports are, or any sport really, <clears throat> as I've aged, you know, you realize it's, it's probably even more important for your mental health than your physical health. Because I find the kind of almost escapist-like relationship you have by focusing on a sport or focusing on the ocean when you're swimming, whatever it is, we keep talking about the ocean, but there's a lot of ways to do that. It's just so critical to clear the mind, clear the mind. It's really, it's really a form of meditation in a way, being in the ocean. And I never really understood that until I was talking to an Indian guru. And, and I did, this is years ago, I go, what is meditation? I don't know all this people sitting around thinking and you know, all of a sudden they feel better. And, and she said, well, you go this and you have the sex and you think it is a better. And she explained how you detach and you erase things from your mind. And after a while you come back and you feel rejuvenated. And I go, well, I think I do that when I'm surfing. Yeah. I got surfing for like two hours and all I think about is, where do I paddle out? Where the waves are good? Where do I position myself when I stand up? How do, you know, and what's the tide doing and the wind and, and all this stuff? And I come in after about two hours, I feel just like you described. And she said, Bill, that is a form of meditation. Yeah. And so there's a lot of ways to clear your mind. And so if you're foggy or you're depressed, or you're not sure how to think about something, exercise, getting into nature, clears the mind. There's a lot of ways to do it, but that certainly can accomplish that, whether you're just swimming in the ocean, swimming in a pool, riding a bike, listening to music. Do I have my earphones on? That's terrible. <laughs> anyway, I was listening to music and riding my bike. How about that? So yeah, that's a form of it. I think honestly, a lot of us in Ocean Fever kind of feel the same. So it's great mm -hmm. that we have like you like supporting us, like mm -hmm. someone that like understands us representing our community, I think. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's like a great thing to have that connection. Cause I think um, a lot of us don't realize that like we live like right here, like mm -hmm. the ocean is such a great part of yep. like just getting out. But I think what people's issue is right now is actually it's not that they don't realize it's there, it's just that they can't get out of the house. Like, what would you give as one piece of advice for them to take that step to go from being inside their house to being able to exercise? Just do it. You know, it's like the Nike ad, just do it. And I find myself doing that myself. I mean, my whole life, you know, I've, I've gotten out there, but there's times where we're all kind of down or unmotivated or kind of, you know, depressed even. And you know, sometimes you just have to get up and start walking, even if you don't feel like it. You know, and, and, and you know, it's kind of a challenge I've had recently because I've been battling cancer. And I had chemo like a week ago, and just yesterday I was so just, just fatigued and I felt tired. And, and I called my nurse practitioner, I told her how bad I felt. She said, Bill, get up, walk to the corner and back. I don't care what you feel like, get up, walk to the corner and back. Just go to the corner. Can you go to the corner? I go, yes, I can go to the corner. Get up and walk to the corner and back. And I got off the phone, I got up, I walked to the corner and back, and I felt so much better. Yeah. And it wasn't much. Then she called me, she said, Bill, do the dishes. Do the dishes? <laughs> you know, just do the dishes, fold your clothes, do the wash, keep moving. And so, just that kind of, that, that first step, you know, it can be so easy and make such a big difference. So it's just really important to, if you're not feeling like you want to do anything, just take that first step. Walk out of the house and go pet the dog. Do anything. And you might feel better just getting out in the open air. Yeah, I think once you take that step, it gets so much better. Like, I, I know at least from my experience, I've like had times that I'm like, I really don't feel like surfing the waves yep. are flat. Yep. There's nothing to look forward to. Have you <laughs> ever regretted getting in the water. No, it's honestly that I'm like, you know what, at least even I when it's flat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, even if you didn't catch a wave. I know, it's yeah. just it's just kind of like, it's. A, but I think I, it's, I built this connection over the years because I've been pushing myself. I was like, it doesn't matter 
if no one's looking, it doesn't matter. I want to do this for myself, you know, yep. and it makes, yep. I don't know if you, you have something to share. Yeah, that. same thing here, like with, especially I'm mainly a swimmer and we've been swimming all throughout December a little and we've been trying to get out there, but it's so cold. Yep. And every time yep. I'm just like, I don't want to get in. Yep. But once I get in and once mm -hmm. I'm going, I adapt and I, I feel so much better. Yep. It is like a form of meditation. Yep. And like, once I get out, I'm just, I'm so happy. It's like yeah. literal adrenaline rush. So. Sometimes it really helps to have a goal. Yeah. Uh, I've done triathlons before. And you know, you got a date coming up. You're gonna have to swim a kilometer. You're gonna have to ride your bike 20 kilometers. You're gonna have to run a 10K or even a shorter one. And you don't feel like training, right? In fact, if I didn't have that goal, I probably wouldn't get out and swim. Yeah. or rode my bike, but often having a goal of that some sort of date, something you can look forward to, also motivates you to, to get out and do that sort of thing. Yeah, and we tried to do that last summer, like we were going to try that Catalina Crossing, and oh, I think wow. we, we were working towards Catalina? that. So. Yeah, uh, no, we were going to do swimming. We are going to wow. have two teams of six. Um, Way better know it. Yeah, and... I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole summer, we worked up to it with the help of our coaches, and we swam more and more and more, and because of it, there we all go. got faster, we all got better, especially yeah. the mentors. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and having camaraderie, that kind of camaraderie, really helps motivate. Yeah. yeah. I think we, it was great that this year we got to actually work with kids, too, so it's kind of like... Uh, Ocean Fever is giving a chance to the youth, the next generation, you know. I think it's important for us to like go, go through these times even when it's rough because it's like we're the next people to have to be lifeguards or like. Yep. So it's, it's great that we have this, um, also this bonding with these kids that aren't that much younger than us, I'd, I'd say. And, you know, um, all thanks, I mean, you, you've helped us out in a lot of races before. I know for the Redondo Avenue swim, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I Myself think it's, and uh, Councilmember Nerenheim and, and Mike Ward, Rick Crump, and um, uh, Brian Manejo kind of started that. Yeah. 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 With I the think, help from the county. I, I just think it's great that like we have a mayor that like loves the ocean. I don't know. You know, it's, it's good that connection. Well, that's a big part of what being by the ocean is all about, in Redondo Beach, and and we kind of take it for granted, right? Far too many people take it for granted. But the Pacific Ocean's right there. Yeah. I was at the farmer's market talking to some people from Pennsylvania. Wow. They were just in for the day and they just couldn't believe they were staring at the Pacific Ocean. And it makes you stop for a second and go, wow, man, we get to look at the ocean every day if we want to. So uh, it's important to, to appreciate what you have. But, you know, the ocean's just one way to, to get out and, and freshen your mind and, and, and reconnect with nature. You, know, you don't have to be a swimmer, you don't have to be a surfer. You know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And we have that at our fingertips here in Redondo Beach. And what makes Redondo like so special to you? Because there's like Hermosa, Manhattan, but what makes Redondo separate from those cities? Uh, it's less crowded. You know, Hermosa and Manhattan are way more densely populated. And uh, Redondo has different offerings. You know, you're also right next to the Palos Verdes Peninsula, which is a beautiful view. Uh, we have a great school district, we have great youth programs. <clears throat> um, it just seems like more of a hometown feel for Redondo. And that's one of the reasons I became mayor or ran for city council for eight years and then I became mayor for four years. And, you know, uh, you're just trying to keep Redondo Redondo, so to speak. And, and it's really important that, that you stay focused on that because, you know, <laughs> uh, change happens and we could end up becoming like Santa Monica. Yeah. Just a megalopolis on the beach. Yeah. Uh, you know, going back to when I was a kid, what I loved about Redondo and swimming in the Seaside Lagoon, you know, that's just a hometown feel and where I think future generations want to be able to enjoy it. Yeah. Where, um, you know, other people have other ideas. Do you have any, like, uh, funny stories or, like, any incidents with the ocean that have, like, made you change or, like, made you kind of, like, look back on it and now you're like, oh my god, how much I've changed or how this well, you know, um, I used to ride really big waves, so um, I would get held underwater for a long time. Yeah. We had these things called uh, two wave hold downs, mm -hmm. where you're down underwater so long another wave comes yeah. before you can even surface. And there would be times where I thought I was going to die. There were times when I was get taken to the bottom in 30 feet of water and bounce off the bottom. And you say, okay, well, I guess this is it. 
right? And then there's like this relaxation that comes over you, and then, and then, and then all of a sudden you come to the surface, and, <laughs> and then yeah. there's another one, right? Yeah. But then, you know, just those experiences <clears throat> just, just made me appreciate life in a way that I, I don't really think I would have ever uh, been able to take in without having dealt with that a few times. Not a lot, maybe. I can probably count on one hand how many times I actually thought I was going to drown yeah. you know, or I saw a big shark. But just that relationship with nature doesn't have to be surfing. You know, and people do a lot of different things, riding your bike. Uh, a lot of different things can, can bring those sorts of experiences. And so I don't want to focus too much on, on the relationship I've had with the ocean because people have a lot of different relationships. But it is key to have a relationship with nature of some sort. You know, whatever it is, hiking, mountain climbing, skiing, snowboarding. Um, uh, just something in nature that, 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 that can connect you with, with really where we came from. And we get so caught up in the urban world and, and electronics, TV, and, and there's a disconnection there, which is okay, but you can't ignore the need for relationship with nature. And I think there's been moments like that where I realized how important it was and how much it taught me. I mean, it just taught me so much about life. It's hard to encapsulate. You know, struggling and, and learning and failing and get back up. Yeah. In the old days, we didn't have cords, right? Everybody's got a surf yeah. leash. Well, yeah. cords. Everybody's got a surf leash, right? Yeah. So you fall off and you don't have to worry about it. Well, in the old days, I was growing up, we didn't have surf leashes, so you had to swim. Yeah. And you need to have to learn how to hold on to your board. Hey, I mean, especially, it make you work out, right? Right? <laughs> especially if you're up at the rocks. Yeah. We would lose our brand new board, and all of a sudden you're just bum 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 up on the rock. Oh, yeah. So you know you have a death grip on your board. You know. So it teaches you things. Like that. And a lot of the kids we work with are will only go out on the board, or because they're either scared of like the conditions or of actual sea life. Like, have you ever been scared of maybe any of the sea life in Redondo? In Redondo, no, yeah. no. But I've been a lot of different places where I've seen. I saw a big shark in Mexico once, scared, scared me a lot. <laughs> Got out of the water. Saw sea snakes in Indonesia. Uh, but generally, no, I really haven't been fearful of the sea life or I've never had any. I get stung by jellyfish, you know, whoop de doo. Yeah. Uh, that's about it. So I really haven't been scared of sea life or, or animals of any kind at all. Thanks for joining us, everybody. See, See you next, next time. time. Woo! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Woo! Let's party him! <laughs>